um, high school. This is not an elective. You know, this is uh, something that you were chosen for. And in some instances, for some of you, something that you even auditioned for. So um, to that to that avail, you have a spiritual responsibility that I don't want to get lost in your natural duties. I don't want this to be a job. I don't want this to feel like you had um, a, a time obligation to punch the clock and to be here and to do that. That is not going to just what you need to be. Realistically and honestly, you have a talent, right? But your talent is not what's going to get us where we need to get to. It's going to be your heart. So you can be as talented as you want to be, but if your heart is not pure towards God, then your talent will just be some Psalm 50 with some clanging symbols, and that's not what we're aiming for. Now, don't get it twisted. Your talent is important because we want to present excellence. But at the same time, we want to present excellent ministry, not just excellent entertainment. So it's important, you know, for all of us to always approach this reverent, not um, dutifully, like, oh, I got to do this or you know, reluctantly, like, why I got to be, or, you know, that kind of situation. That's going to brew the wrong spirit. And for us to reach where we need to reach, it has to be a collective act. It has to be something that we do in unity. So um, there's, there's an art to worship, but more importantly, there's a heart to worship. And if you master the art without mastering the heart, then you'll just sound good but be ineffective. Um, we are currently today living in the climate and culture where the church is the most talented that it's been ever. The quality of talent that the church has at the moment. We have more people who um, have really taken the craft of music more serious now than we ever have. We have more people who have gone to school and studied it. People who literally spend days in and days out studying the craft. And we have a talented culture and society. But in many cases, many of them are missing the boat because their focus is in the culture of music. Their relationship is, very, is, is really with music more than it's with ministry. I don't want that to be our situation. I want our focus to be ministry. And we're using music as the tool to do it. I never want music to be first. Ministry is first. And music is the avenue that we're taking the people down because it's a universal language. So we're using the music as a tool, but ultimately it's about ministry. So for all of us, it is important for you to be in the word because the word is what you want to come out. Not your feelings, not your opinion, not any of that. And although you are singing probably 99% of the time, songs that someone else wrote, you are still singing that song based off of just learning the words. And you need it to be in you. And you need to make sure that it lines up with scripture so that you can then minister and not just sing. You're not just, you know, um, performing or any of that. So, like, we had the responsibility of carrying the art of the covenant. That's that's our role as praise and worship leaders, um, and we don't we don't have the option of dropping it. We we don't get we don't get a bad day. I know we're human, and bad days happen. But because of our relationship with God, and because of our relationship with worship, those bad days don't stay bad days. Even if it's a bad morning on a day of. It doesn't stay that way because of your relationship, your relationship with God and your relationship with worship. So I never want us to get so complacent and, and you know, so relaxed about what we're doing that we forget that we're carrying the ark. And that's that's vitally important. We've got to carry it with pride and we have to carry it responsibly. Um, then, um, my my last point, uh, 
is we need to make sure that too we are prepared. Like I think that our approach in the in the church community period, but specifically here, I think our approach is wrong. I think that we come to rehearsal to prepare. When you prepare for rehearsal, and then in rehearsal, you practice so that you are comfortable when you minister. We can't eliminate a step and come to rehearsal and start preparing and expect to minister. In rehearsal is when we're practicing what we prepared for. So we've got to prepare, then we get to rehearsal and we practice, and we're not just practicing the music, we're not just practicing the song, we're practicing worship, we're practicing praise, we're practicing mastering the atmosphere. Like, I can't be your tour guide at Walter's Art Gallery if I've never been. So you come walking in the door and I'm walking in with you, I'm going to show you, what am I going to show you? I, like, I don't know where nothing is, I ain't been here, you got to go back from you, you're going to yourself over with me, because I don't even know where the bathroom is. I haven't been here. So I can't be your tour guide somewhere that I haven't been, somewhere that I'm not comfortable being, somewhere that I don't know my way around. So as a worship leader, we have the responsibility to be comfortable in God's presence. It should never be a pull. It should never be a tug. It should never be um, a chore about God's presence from praise or from worship when it comes to dealing with us. So we, you know, we need to be preparing away from here. Your rehearsal, your rehearsal, your personal rehearsal is probably more important than our collective rehearsal. It's the same way with the worship experience. The, the corporate worship experience is built off of all of the individual worship that come together and create the corporate. But if we don't have any individual worship, then we're just corporate. We're not corporate worship because we're lacking the worship because nobody is doing it individually away from the sanctuary. That is something that we can't control. But we need to understand the battle that we're up against because they aren't thinking about that. They're thinking we are going to carry their weight. It's one thing to walk a mile just you. It's another thing to walk a mile with 35, 45, 75, 150 people on your back. It takes a lot more to accomplish that. And so that's what we are up against. And that's why I don't want our mindset to be twisted and we don't understand fully what we are actually preparing for, what we are facing, because majority of the people that walk through the door do not walk through the door with thanksgiving in their heart and with praise on their lips. They walk in the door with their burdens, with their struggles, and they take them to their seat and they say, get them off of me. And that's what they are expecting us to do, literally. And then we have a responsibility to just usher in the presence of the Lord. God does all of that. But we have that responsibility of ushering in the presence of the Lord to get him healed. And so in doing that, we make the man of God's job easier because he doesn't have to come through and then cut through everything that's still repeat. Now, some things we can't, you know, fix because... You ain't come to church all the time, so you missed the opportunity to be a part of the worship experience. But we have to make sure that we're on point in doing what it is that we're supposed to do. We're not going to be able to do it with just our natural mindset. We're going to have to do it with the Spirit of God. We're going to have to do it through the Word of God. We're going to have to do it with our relationship. And so um, I was telling Cameron, like, it can be offensive to some and pastors say, we need people that got the Holy Ghost. Because you can say, oh, I got the Holy Ghost. But if you're not operating in the Holy Ghost, then having it doesn't mean anything. You can have a bunch of money in your bank account, but if you ain't got your bank card and you stand in line, you ain't getting it. So it's not, a, it's not about the fact that you don't have it, but standing in front of me as a cashier, I don't know what you got in your bank account. All I know is you should be swiping. At this point, you got all this stuff you want to do. You got all this stuff you want God to do. You need to swipe and they need to go through and that's what's happening. People are expecting us to swipe and bring the presence of God in for him to do all of these other things. But our account has to have something. And so we can't be, you know, getting up here looking foolish, getting declined because we ain't got, we ain't got nothing. 
So that's why your preparation is important because you then store up what's necessary for you to produce. So you should be preparing, practicing, and then producing. And that producing is can get mixed up with performance. And that's what I don't want. I don't want us to get producing mixed up with performance. So we need to produce. There's an atmosphere that we are after, and that's the presence of God. And in that atmosphere, God can do what he wants. Literally, we are showing up to be puppets that he can use in whatever way he wants to do it. We can come with an agenda, which we should always have. But if he says, stay in prayer, that's where we stay. If he says, skip that, go straight to the worship, that's where we're going. If we, you know, plan it and do four songs and one song is where he is, that's where we stay in. But that only comes when you are yielded to the spirit and your spirit has a relationship with his spirit so that he can speak. That's the Holy Ghost that you need to have, that you are in tune with what's going on. It, there's a, a higher level and expectation of that when you are a worship leader because you need to be able to be ahead of the move because you are a part of creating. So, it, for example, you know, we could be singing a song, but in, in the midst of singing that song, I need to lead you, I need to lead the band, and I need to lead the people. And they don't need the same type of leadership. The type of notice that I need to give the band is different than the type of notice that I need to give you. It's different than what I need to give to the people. So I need to be in position with an understanding of what my full job is and what I need to do so that I can effectively do it. I'm not, as a worship leader, I'm not leading a song. I'm leading a, a people. I'm leading a move. So it's not about me learning the song, knowing the song, and then leading the song. It's about me being in position, being yielded, but being prepared to lead all that needs to be led. And depending on what I'm working with at that time, a worship leader, depending on what you're working with at that time, will determine how much more ahead you have to be to be able to do it. So you have to, you have to be in the moment, but be ahead of the moment because you have to prepare the people that are in the moment with you for what's going to happen. They are the last people to come. But we have to lead this people, this people, so that we can move and get to the place together. It should be a seamless turn when we cut corners, not uh, um, a horrible, bumpy, yellow bus ride where they cut the corner and you feel like you're about to flip out the window because there's no, you, you didn't know they didn't turn, you didn't know that they was going here, you didn't know that, so you, you didn't brace yourself, you weren't looking, you weren't ready. So it's that kind of environment that we shouldn't have here. That shouldn't be here. It might be there because they weren't prepared, they didn't do the necessary tools, but up here, we know we're making this turn. We know, like, there's a sound that you need to hear. You know what I'm saying? There's a there's a feeling that you need to feel. You got to know when the shift is happening. You got to be a part of the shift. You got to be a part of the pre-shift, really, so that when the shift happens, you're in it. Like, I think that because as a culture, the church is spoiled and they don't understand all that it takes. Like, many people look at a lot of things and they take it for granted. If you had to... Uh, if you had to officiate the service, it's really not as easy as they make it look. If you had to uh, maintain an atmosphere to make sure that it's conducive and it goes to places it needs to go and do all of that, from a band perspective, it just seems like, oh, they're doing this, they're doing that. But it takes a lot of work to be in pre-position to know we need to shift to worship and worship hasn't happened yet. We need to shift to a praise because a praise is about to break out and there's no evidence of that praise about to break out. Like the pre, um, the pre notion of knowing what's getting ready to happen is more important when you are a leader, and that is vital, and that's not happening without the Holy Ghost. So that's what the man of God was talking about when he was saying we need people with the Holy Ghost because where we're trying to get to, we're not going to get to you guys because we can't just do this on our own and think we're going to achieve it. The only thing that you're going to do like that is perform, and that's not what our end goal is. You understand what I'm saying? Anybody got any questions or concerns? Anything you don't understand? Need clarity on? Um, 
any of that? No? Beautiful. I always think that no questions means no duties. Do you understand?